and fellow devotees of the Lord, Namaskars to every one of you. The law of life is first things must be done first. Whatever is most important to us must be done now. And the most important thing for all of us is the higher life that we seek. Therefore, we should start the work now. Now is the time now is the right season, there can be no postponement. Even the best of us is likely to be confused over what is most important in our life. Let me tell you of Rabia and Hassan Darwish. Once Rabia was sitting on the banks of a river, when Hassan Darwish came over to see her, he threw his straw mat into the waters of the river and turning to Rabia, he said, Rabia, come, let us sit upon this mat and meditate. Hassan Darvesh had acquired extraordinary powers, Siddhis, whereby he could stay afloat on the water. He wanted to demonstrate his power to Rabia and the world. But Rabia saw through this. She felt that it would only be a public display 
to impress people and not really an exercise in meditation. She said to her son, if you want to meditate on God, I have a better way. Rabia then threw her prayer mat in the air and said to her son Darvesh, come, let us rise in the air and meditate. Hassan was taken aback. He replied, this is beyond me. I can only float on the water. That is the extent of my power. Arabia said to him, what you can do, even a fish can do. And what I can do, a tiny fly can also do. But we are neither fish to float in the water nor flies to fly in the air. Let us not forget the real purpose and the true goal for which we have received this human birth. Sant Kabir says, what you can do tomorrow, do it today. What you can do today, do it right now. For the holy ones tell us that this human birth is rare and precious. Any good thing that you wish to do tomorrow, do it today. Don't postpone it. Do it right now. Our time is limited and we should not waste it in false pursuits. This life of ours is rare and precious and not a moment should be wasted. I remember one night a man came to me around the hour of midnight. Surprised, I asked him, what brings you here at this late hour? He replied, I have come to give 25,000 rupees to you for the service of the poor. A little surprised, I murmured, but what is the hurry? Surely we cannot carry out service of the poor at this hour. The brother replied, I was lying in bed when the thought came to me that I should donate something for the poor. I did not want to wait till the morning for who knows what might happen between now and tomorrow. I might change my mind during that time or I might not live to see the morrow. And so I came running to you at this late hour. God gave me a good thought and I want to translate this good thought into a good act right now. I don't want to postpone this till tomorrow for tomorrow may never come. My dear friends, if you wish to do a good deed, do it now. Do not wait for the right moment the appropriate moment, the auspicious moment, for it will never come. Whether it is a good deed which you wish to perform or a spiritual sadhana that you wish to practice, the right time is now. Many years ago, someone said to me that it was good to practice meditation at the auspicious and sacred hour of Brahma Mahurat that is between 4 and 6 early in the morning. I was determined to follow his advice, but try as I might, I could not wake up so early in the, morn in the morning. I would sleep over, I would postpone it to another time. Every day I told myself, today let me sleep a bit, tomorrow I shall wake up at the dawn. In this way a whole year passed by. I was appalled. I chided myself severely. Enough is enough, I said to myself. I shall not sleep tonight. I shall not allow the sacred hour to slip by. At long last, with great determination, I trained my mind and accomplished my purpose. Friends, it is said of Mahatma Gandhi, that once when he was in jail, he came across a very poor man who served him graciously. Gandhiji said to him, 
if ever you are in need of anything, do come to me. I will do whatever I can. Many years passed. There was famine in the poor man's village. Remembering Gandhiji's words, the man went to Gandhiji's ashram. At that time, Gandhiji was in an important meeting. The man sent Gandhiji a message, I hope you remember me. We were together in jail and you had promised that you would help me whenever I needed it. I would like to take up your kind offer of help now, if you will permit me. As luck would have it, Gandhiji was preoccupied with the meeting and he could not go and meet the man then and there. When the meeting was over, Gandhiji sent for him, but the poor man had left by then. He had gone away thinking that Gandhiji might have forgotten their days together in the jail. After all, he thought, Gandhiji was a great, great man and he only a poor downtrodden peasant. He was mistaken, for Gandhiji was a kind and sensitive soul. Gandhiji sent people in search of the man, but he could not be found. Neither his address nor his whereabouts were known to anyone. Gandhiji was despondent. He repented. The few minutes delay which had prevented him from meeting the man. He could have very easily taken a break from the meeting and come out to meet this man, but he had not. And he had not been able to keep his promise to the man. Would you believe it? Gandhiji carried this regret all his life. As they say, Time and tide wait for no man. While we are preoccupied, life keeps speeding on. Once a small child went out shopping with her mother in the city of Paris. On the way, he saw an old man holding out his shabby cap upside down in his hand. In rich cities like Paris, Begging in public is not allowed. So poor men hold out their caps to get a few coins. Seeing the man, the small child said to her mother, Mama, how much money do you have? The mother smiled indulgently and said to the child, Enough to buy you whatever you like. In that case, can I have a few coins to give to this poor man? The mother was angry. She said to her child, you do not know the value of money. And she dragged the child away forcibly from the spot. She was sure that the child would forget the man after some time. But all the while they were shopping, the picture of the old man haunted the child. The mother was coaxing her to buy candy and chocolates, but the girl remained adamant, refusing all the goodies offered to her. She only said, I don't want candies, I don't want chocolates, give me some money so that I can drop it in the poor man's cap. The mother on her part was stubborn as well. She felt that she would be losing her authority if she gave in to the child's demand. Mother and daughter returned home after a very unhappy shopping expedition. That night, the child could not sleep. She kept murmuring, Mama, Mama, please give me some money for the poor man. The mother was perturbed and promised the child that she could go back next day and drop as many coins as she liked into the man's cap. It was well past midnight when the child finally fell asleep. Next day, the mother took the child to the spot where the old poor man had been. 
but he was nowhere to be found. The child began to weep and the mother felt very sad. Strange are the ways of fate. The following day the child met with an accident and died instantly. The mother was distraught. She cried out, what have I done? Just for a little money, I broke your heart and did not fulfill your wish. I can never ever forgive myself as long as I live. My dear brothers and sisters, let us put every moment of our lives to the best possible use. Let us wake up before it is too late. Let us not waste this rare opportunity of the human birth. Whatever good we can do, let us do it today. Rather, let us do it now, at this very moment, and be richly blessed. Om Shanti 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 Not only from east to west but from north to south too all around the globe the intelligent choice of intelligent readers east and west series by Dada JP Vaswani available at Geeta Publishing House 10 Sadhu Vaswani Path Pune 411001